The Angular team has recently released an RFC proposing standalone components, pipes, and directives, and making ng modules optional. How will this help current and future Angular developers? Let's get into it. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Brandon Roberts, and I make videos about web development and open source projects. For those of you who have been around the Angular ecosystem for a while, ng modules are just part of how you develop Angular applications. For those of you who haven't tried Angular already, an ng module is a class that is decorated uh, with some metadata. ng modules are used to declare components, pipes, and directives. They're also used to register providers and services, to bootstrap an Angular application, to lazy load routes, to use functionality from external libraries, and more. From a high level perspective, uh, ng modules provide context about what's available in a given area of an application and how to create jet injectors for those different levels and applications. Even going back to the Angular JS days, Angular had modules that were used in a similar way, which they borrowed this approach when moving to the latest version of or moving to rewriting of the framework of Angular. But ng modules weren't always a thing in Angular. If you go back to when Angular was called Angular 2, even as early as the release candidate days, Angular did not have ng modules. Igor Minar wrote a long tweet that gives a lot more backstory about this also, but each individual piece was imported and consumed directly in the component. Uh, components and pipes and directives like ngif and ng4 were just added to the metadata of the component decorator. The router, well, the router is a whole different story all in itself, but I think you get the idea. This made Angular unique in that components were not the primary way that you interacted with these Angular applications. In other ecosystems like React, Vue, Svelte, and others, components are first priority in the primary way that you're introduced to building apps within those ecosystems. The Angular community has long been on both sides of coming up with ways to minimize or even remove ng modules from Angular. We can talk about the scam approach, the newly coined term, the aim approach for creating these components and modules together. Now we're at a point where the Angular team is considering making components, pipes, and directives to be standalone where they don't depend on an ng module. Making ng module optional and eliminating and going down this path of trying to eliminate some of the overhead of building Angular applications. If you take a look at the RFC that's linked in the description, it takes a look at what are the goals and non-goals that the Angular team wants to solve with this. And it's usually around components. And the one of the main things that they talk about in this uh, RFC is making an easy way, easier way to uh, handle lazy loading components and being able to uh, have the components have everything they need to be able to uh, be created dynamically. This is one thing that you still have to rely on ng modules today for in the creation of an injector before you can dynamically create a component. As I mentioned before, components need ng modules today to have context about other things that are available, maybe other providers, uh, pipes and directives that are available to those components. And this kind of flips that responsibility to where you can define what a component needs in the component itself and not have, not need the ng module. So in this RFC, it talks about goals and non-goals. I posted a tweet like this one before that uh, mentioned a, the, one of the thumbnails that I was working on for this video. And it brought up a lot of interesting conversations about when in the past that we've used this type type of pictures to define what happens to things in Angular when we're no longer using them. So we're not going to make that same mistake again and say this is the, the death of ng modules. But it is one thing that they are specifically targeting as far as a goal is to make ng modules optional and minimize their usage within the framework. So if we look at this simple example of a component that is standalone, we can see that there aren't any ng modules that we have to associate this component with. We just use a standalone flag and that gives the metadata enough information or the compiler enough information to handle that, uh, that component. Taking a look at another example, we can see how this was also backwards compatible with other, with other implementations where an ng module isn't required. Instead of importing an ng module, you can just import the components, pipes, or directives into this components metadata and use it there. As I mentioned before, this goes back to 
a pattern that was uh, has been around the Angular ecosystem for a while called the SCAM pattern, which is single component and module pattern. And uh, Lars is one of has been an early proponent of this pattern and has definitely championed it uh, throughout the life throughout its life cycle. And it kind of uh, influenced this um, mental model around optional ng modules or standalone components, kind of folding those two ideas together. There are also other areas where standalone components, pipes, and directives would be valuable within the framework, uh, including, like I said, lazy loading components, uh, and also using the router where we don't have to load ng modules to load components that contain routes. But you can read further in the RFC to learn more about that. As someone who's been in the Angular ecosystem for a while, I think this is a good move. I even gave a talk a couple of years ago after Ivy was released about building a new router with Ivy for Angular, where we could get back to thinking more about components and less about modules and injectors. You can also find a link to that video in the description. Angular already has a solid component model, dependency injection, routing forms, and other pieces of uh, infrastructure that are comparable with other frameworks. NG modules have always felt like an extra piece that made Angular stand out as being more complex. If and when NG modules become optional, there'll be one less thing to teach and one less thing to explain across the entire framework for new Angular developers. This will also pave a way for an easier mental model for future web developers looking to get started with Angular. Will this win over uh, developers from other ecosystems such as React, Vue, and Svelte? Um, maybe, maybe not. Will this change ng modules in the minds of other developers? We'll have to see. I mean, some people still like ng modules and they still see some value that they provide uh, with the framework that it is today. Now, I will say that what we don't want is this to uh, turn over the entire Angular framework because we're, we are going to have to adjust to this new world if and when this RFC becomes uh, implemented in the framework because we have to rethink how we teach Angular and how the existing examples, documentation, material that's out there, all those things will have to be uh, reworked in some kind of way to make room for this new uh, world that we'll be in. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments of what you think about the potential of this being added to Angular and also leave some feedback on the RFC while it's still open. Also, if you like this video, Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment about other videos you would like to see, as it really helps out the channel. And with that, I'll see you after the next build.